Hi, hello, my name's Ollie and this is Book Draw. For those who don't know my channel, I enjoy uh, looking at queer fiction and doing little reviews and creating artworks about it. I haven't created any artwork for a little while and that's deliberate just because I'm really busy. <laughs> I'm um, doing a commission at the moment with Liverpool Pride and so I'm creating a banner in partnership with the Old Fashion Festival. They're a body positive um, organisation so they enjoy celebrating diverse body shapes including all the kind of wibbles and wobbles as well as alternative identities in terms of piercings and tattoos. They're an incredible group of people. Um, so I've been collecting um, feedback with them and I did a little workshop and we brought our ideas together and I'm making a pride parade banner. <laughs> uh, and so they'll be walking down the streets of Liverpool waving their banner, which I will have designed. Um, so I'll do a little video about that later. That meant that all my free time has been dedicated to producing that at the moment. So in the meantime, I'm gonna do a little bit of a vlog video, um, which is all about Bradford um, Literature Festival. It's their third year this year. This is the second time that I'm going. I'm really excited about it. They have like over 300 different writers um, on a week, but so I'm visiting on the Saturday. This is probably being uploaded a bit later than that. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be seeing three different talks. I'll be seeing uh, stuff on Gothic Yorkshire. So these are um, three different uh, writers who have been inspired by um, the landscape of Yorkshire in different ways. I'm then uh, going on to see uh, dystopian realities. Um, and I just love dystopian in general. So I'm excited to see what contemporary writers they are and what position they're coming from. And then lastly, I'm seeing The Good Immigrant, uh, which is a talk about the novel um, The Good Im Immigrant, which is a series of like, essays. It's not a novel, sorry. It's a series of essays about, um, from different people, but it was crowdsource funded. And I think it was um, kind of made popular because of JK Rowling kind of stayed behind it. So I'm interested in like how all of that came about. Um, and I was going to look at um, gender utopians, but... Um, that's not happening, which is really a shame because I, I really wanted to go and see that and that uh, that would have had a queer slant. So none of this is even going to be a bit queer. So I'm really like failing on my channel on a lot of levels at the moment. Uh, <laughs> but basically you will get a little insight to my day hanging out in Bradford and I will catch up with you soon. I'm not being as regular at the moment and that's just because of um, the way I've had to prioritise my time um, making this wonderful banner. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's taking a lot. It's taking a lot. It's a big thing, um, but it's very exciting and I will update you about that too. Anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoyed hanging out with me today and seeing little bits and I'll see you soon. So I've just done my first uh, event for Bradford Literature Festival, which was Gothic Yorkshire, and that had three people, Sarah Donakey, Ben Myers, and Sophia Tolbin. Um, it was a really interesting conversation, there was a lot of focus on Withering Heights, and weirdly this one woman actually said, is this a girly book? Like, um, and I was like, what the? <laughs> and um, I think that's just also because I've been reading gender games, but then um, Ben Myers said, I think it's a man's book. And so that whole gender debate, it's like, what does that even mean between them? They didn't really seem to know. And they ended up moving away from the subject of that, I think, because gender didn't really need to be in the discussion of what makes a gothic gothic. And they're saying how gothic now has, in contemporary uh, writing, taking like a di different direction possibly. And they're talking about other points of fear that people have and I thought that was really interesting in terms of uh, I do think we get scared um, in different ways now uh, but then they're also saying how someone who reads something like Withering Heights can still become terrified <laughs> which I think is really true too. That kind of what it what makes a really good gothic story gothic and how um, people use um, or look towards um, Yorkshire-based landscapes for those kind of things. I thought it was quite interesting in terms of they're talking about places like Bradford or like uh, any kind of urban environments where you've got the little alleyways, you've got the grim of the north as they kind of describe it, you've got those dark kind of uneasy areas but then you also as soon as you go outside of the city you've got the landscapes, you've got the sea, you've got um, the hills and the kind of barrenness and, um, and how you can draw from those elements put them into 
the story and so that kind of uh, had an interesting kind of impact on me in terms of thinking about what it means to be God. Anyway, it's probably enough for this one. I'm going on to find out a bit, a bit about dystopian stuff. This is empty. We have failed in our mission, but we must not forsake our allies. I've just seen the realities behind dystopian futures, which was uh, a really good talk actually. Um, so it was a panel of three people. There was Sarah Govert and uh, Oliver Morton and E.J. Swift, who were the three uh, people talking. They're uh, all novelists, um, and they each had quite like different perspectives. Um, so Oliver was kind of more interested in uh, geoengineering, which I'm not really familiar with, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, but I think it's just more kind of like how the land is used and how that can uh, have an impact on our world um, and when that kind of goes wrong. Um, whereas um, Sarah Govert's uh, work was about a slightly nearer future, uh, 2059, where Britain is partially submerged underwater and people have to take this test. Um, uh, and if they pass, they're able to be on the bit of land, whereas if they fail, then they're kind of shipped off to this place which is effectively going to kill them. Um, but because it's slightly set in the future, those who are rich enough can um, have this like chip in their mind, which um, makes them able to kind of download the answers that they need. Um, so it's kind of about class as well. Uh, so I, re I thought she was really interesting when she was talking about the work. I'm like, I think I'm going to go down and probably get that book, uh, but it's part of a trilogy and I do love a bit of dystopian fiction. Um, and then E.J. Um, e. Swift, uh, so she's more interested in the environmental issues. Um, I mean, I think all three of them are generally interested in environmental in uh, issues um, in kind of a uh, questioning of what our current future might look like. But she particularly seems driven by um, the impact of uh, the environment like locally on a global level as well. But she's done a trilogy tool. The subjects that they're kind of talking about were interesting around dystopian fiction. Um, they raised about um, utopias and how, uh, why don't we talk about utopias. And something which I hadn't come across before was um, uh, raised uh, in science fiction, there's something called hieroglyphs. Um, and hieroglyphs is about inspiring the next generation really for a more positive future and that sounds massively exciting i want to get in on that action so all these type of things which i never kind of really thought about in fiction which made me kind of go oh this is quite cool i quite like this i quite like learning about what writers think and uh, feel about um so it was a really interesting uh, discussion um and i just enjoyed learning about how an author creates the structure of their their world of, of what they or how they view our world currently and how they um, can create a catastrophe in their mind in their imagination on the basis of our actions currently inside this uh, in giant inflatable they have uh, different writers and um, novelists who do signings so I'm gonna have a good old mooch around and probably purchase a couple of books So I've done exactly what I said I wouldn't do, and I brought two mini books my partner is going to kick off. And of course, I brought all the books. I managed to actually stop myself from buying about four other books, which I really could have done, uh, but just running through them. So I bought um, Osiris, which is by E.J. Swift, who I just went to the talk to, um, because she was really compelling in terms of the stuff that she was talking about. And um, when I was actually reading the back, um, this is kind of split between two characters. One's from a very affluent kind of background, and the other is from a, a more fr a deprived background, from the sounds of it. And it's how they come together and have to overcome their situation uh, in their kind of dystopian environment. So I'm now even more intrigued with this one. I did like Oliver Morton, uh, the way he spoke about his um, book. However, it was far too uh, scientific, I'd say. And when I was reading the backs of the covers, I was just like. <laughs> so I just went for this one instead. The next one I got 
was Stranger in a Strange Land, and this is by Gary Young. Um, so when I was just looking through this, it looked like it was a bit queer and a bit interesting, a bit different. Um, and I think it's about identity and race and kind of uh, how you fit in a place. Um, so I was just kind of curious by this one, and I'll be uh, looking forward to having a good read through that one. Uh, the next one that I read, um, well, saw and was like, yes, you look good, was The, uh, the Wacky Man, uh, which is by Lynn G. Farrell. Um, so this one seems to be a bit about someone who is struggling with their mental health. And then this next one, which I totally saw last year when I was at um, Bradford Village Festival, on another talk about dystopian fiction, uh, is Astra, and this one's by Naomi Foyle. Um, so that one had kind of elements about um, uh, biology in terms of like biochemistry and stuff. I was just kind of interested in the world building that she'd done, but when she um, was talking about it last year, I was like, yes, this is a book for me. So I have just done the last one, which was the Good Immigrant, and it was a panel discussion which was hosted uh, by Ralph Dartford from um, A Firm of Poets. He's very cool, really good at spoken word stuff. And then they had uh, Nikesh Sukla, uh, who's the editor of The Good Immigrant, talking with uh, Sabrina Mahfans, I think you pronounce her surname. Um, and there was supposed to be Coco Can, but she wasn't available for some reason, which is a real shame because I actually enjoyed her story quite a bit, uh, where she was kind of talking about flags, but were also a lot of her sexual experiences, which were kind of interesting and quite proud, which was like, yeah, good girl, go get some. <laughs> but, um, so she was missing, but the other two did a really great job. They both did little readings, which was really nice. Um, and then uh, they actually opened it up to the floor. One thing I have to say, if you're going to ask a freaking question, ask a freaking question. There was a couple of people, like, who... It was a random stream of consciousness, and I was just like, Is there, is, is there a point in here? Where are you going to actually get to a point and ask a question? <laughs> Nikesh actually said, uh, I've got to get a train. And then this one guy afterwards went into another random stream of consciousness. Um, so that's always, always um, a joy when you've got someone doing that. <laughs> uh, but it was all talking about, like, the... Uh, the good immigrant in terms of um, the different stories that are involved and uh, why this book came about and what were the motives were behind that and the frustration and feeling that um, there wasn't enough discussion happening about migration, about um, diverse voices in publishing, um, in the infrastructure. Um, so it was really interesting kind of insight to what those motivations were and how they actively uh, set out against them, um, so it was a really enjoyable, like, last discussion. It was quite full on, uh, especially as it was, like, it was over an hour long, I think it was about an hour and a half, so it was lots of time to kind of take in. Anyway, I'm gonna go and sleep on the train. It's been a big day. I'll see you all soon. <laughs> Bye.